and let's continue our interview fun with one of those senior transfer guards. T. John Lucas joins us in Studio B. First time in studio, question mark? And I think so, right? Well, you came in unofficially during your tour. But I'm talking on the show. On the show, yeah. yep, yeah. yep. First yeah. time in Good studio. Good to have you, man. Zoom call, yeah. Yes, Zoom's not the same. We like this better than <laughs> we Zoom. We like this no, better, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, uh, obviously everyone's looking very sharp and dapper in the suits. You, uh, now sure now you, it, you've added you've had glasses and, you know, you know, looking good, man. Hey, man, I'm trying. You're looking always, good. Th- this is something you feel strongly about. You want to be the best dressed wherever you go, whether it's on the golf course, whether it's to the stadium, right? Of course, all the time, all the time. Are you the best dressed today? On the team? It's no competition. <laughs> no competition. Oh, it's not even close. Wow. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and a shout-out to uh, your mom, Marie, and your grandma, Barbara, and the whole you know, Lucas The Lucas clan. gang, man. And Let's they, go. they love BYU, and we appreciate that. No, they do. They're, they're my biggest fans, and they love it here. And when they came here, they fell in love just like I did. Are they going to critique you on – how the interview goes? Is it like that level oh, yeah. or is it all... Po- okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Everything. M- Mom's watching right now. She's watching right now. You should have sat up. Yeah, <laughs> you should have exactly. sat up. Your tie is crooked. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, am I looking good? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now we, hey, we're here to tell you, you're, lo- you're looking really good. Uh, since you've been in Provo, how has your BYU experience compared to what your expectations were coming into the program? Compare and contrast that. Um, so I l- knew little to nothing about Utah. Never been to Utah in my life. I probably never even thought about going to Utah in my life, but it's something I probably regret now. I mean, it's it's been beautiful here. You know, the the mountains, the people, everybody's been, you know, so nice to me. Uh, Provo's been amazing. You know, if you walk around with the BYU basketball shirt on, it's like the love is it's unmatched everywhere. You know, I'm getting stopped in Ross and Walmart. Um, just because I have on BYU basketball, like, ready for the season, you know, go get the get Zags this year. And so, you know, I've loved it ever since I've gotten here. You know, I'm just excited for what we have in store for people this year. I love that. And it's great to have you here. Honestly, we've talked about it for months, but here we are. It's almost the season. Do you have winter coats? You good on that front? Oh, yeah. You're from, from Milwaukee. Wisconsin. You Come know. On now. Yeah, you know, he, just he checking. It's, it's, I'm feeling good right now. I'm like, <laughs> shoot, like, it's like, warm. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No All I need is below. a hoodie. It's actually going to be 60-something today, so I we're good. Dude. That's that's heaven on me. Hey, you and you and Figure have this little uh, thing going, right, with Milwaukee sports mm-hmm. against everybody else. Packers and the Bucks. The Packers. Bucks won. You're yes. riding, riding high. Yes. Yeah. We were a little upset. We walked in the first week, and we lost that first week with the Packers. Walked in with our head down, but, you know, we've been walking high ever since. So. <laughs> One loss to the Saints. Come Saints. on, man. It's like, come on, but, you know. <laughs> Your quarterback's yelling at the Bears fans. Life is good, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently he has a stake in the Bears' ownership. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yes. Oh, my goodness. And well, a uh, good way to say that. that yes. T. John Lucas with us on BYU Sports <laughs> Nation. It's BYU Basketball Media Day. Energy is super high. Is there anybody on the team that's – Low energy? Maybe it's you. Maybe you're the guy that's like, hey, okay, we need to like bring it back even keel. Like, how how is the energy level overall from one to seventeen on the roster? Um, everybody pretty much has energy. I would say the most like calm and collective is probably Poda. He's just quiet. Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't really say much. The freshman from New Zealand. Yes, the freshman from New Zealand. But you know, you know, he always comes in, works hard. But you know, if you come in and do what you got to do, I'm no have no problem with you being quiet. So you got Rich on one end of the spectrum, Richard uh, Harward. And that's Poda like on the another other. level, though. Like Rich <laughs> is like on a pedestal by himself, and then there's like everyone else, and then there's the last person. So. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so Coach has talked about your versatility, not only as a scorer but as a passer, and that's what Caleb was saying. Oh, Tijon as a passer is just amazing. And then, of course, as a rebounder, you had like five a game as well last year. What is it you expect to contribute this year on this team in this situation? Because every team in year is different. Mm-hmm. But you have a skill set that could be kind of wherever BYU needs you. Uh, yeah, just like you said, honestly, whatever we need at the time uh, during the game, you know, I'm able to score, able to pass, rebound, and I try to do a little bit of everything. And my biggest thing is just making the right play. I was always brought up on, you know, making the right play, and that's something I live off of. And you know, I, that's why I watch like Chris Paul and those guys that you know just always make the right read, whether that's for him to score, for him to pass, or for him to get on somebody and yell, just trying to make the right read and the right play all the time. Was it, um, or has it, because it's still going, been been hard or easy to sort of integrate into a group where you're expected to be a leader, even though you haven't been here? Um, 
it was hard at first. I wouldn't say hard. It was just challenging trying to lead people that know the plays already, and I don't really know them. It's like <laughs> I can't tell him what to do, and I don't even know what I'm supposed to do yet. <laughs> but you know, I've I've learned a lot. Um, I pick up uh, things pretty pretty fast, and you know, now I'm able to you know step more into that leadership role and helping guys out. Um, but you know, that's just one phase of it. Um, you know, I like to lead by actions as well. You know, working hard and. Just coming every day with energy and, you know, ready to learn. How would you explain the dynamic and the chemistry between you and Alex Barcella right now? How will that work? Oh, uh, it's it's going to be a movie. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's really nice. Me and Alex, we, you know, we talk a lot. You know, we hang out a lot, you know. Uh, I think it's going to be very great for, you know, guys to see and for our team, for us to be able to play out there together and make plays. And we're both playmakers and we both can play off the ball, play on the ball. Um, so I think it's actually going to be very fun to watch and exciting and something that, you know, Cougar Nation to be happy to see. What did you work on in the offseason? Um, it's no secret shooting. Just owning my shot and shooting a bunch of jump shots and floaters, you know, different little floaters every day, uh, shots that I get in the game the most. And honestly, just getting my reads, you know, down to – perfection at the end of the day you're talking um, passes yeah you know passes what? and you know when to score knowing when to shoot the floater when to shoot a three getting my feet set early you know things like that and just you know finding little niches and necks to just sharpen up and so i can get ready to play for the next level t john lucas is on byu sports nation part of byu basketball media day how is this team from what you've experienced with them different than any other team you've been a part of um the joy the joy everyone brings in the gym and the joy everyone has to learn every day. Um, I don't think there's been a dull practice where, you know, it's like energy's down. Nobody wants to be here. You know, sometimes after those two a days, you get to the last one. It's like everyone's dragging. I mean, the last one was probably as good as the first one, honestly. And, you know, everybody's coming in ready to work. And, you know, it's been great to see that, you know, everybody's bought in for the common thing. And that's just winning. How has that happened? Uh, I think that starts, you know, obviously with the coach. Uh, coach Pope has done a great job in trying to bring in, uh, join the gym every day. And then it starts with the leaders and the players on the court as well. You know, make sure we hold our part, you know, and making sure everybody's ready to go, you know, make sure our group texts, you know, make sure nobody's late. You know, that's a big thing. You know, a lot of people like to be late sometimes in sports, whether that's basketball, football, whatever. Make sure everybody's on time. Make sure a guy's getting up shots. Um, make sure guys get in there and watch a film. And I think, you know, it's got to a point where we don't have to even remind guys to do that now. And guys are doing it on their own. And so that's when you start to see success, when you have, you know, a player-led team and everybody's, you know, bought in and doing their own thing. Just maybe as part of the energy that's brought to the gym has something to do with uh, the sugar that's available around Provo, right? <laughs> I mean, between, between cookies and sodas, like uh, we understand that uh, you You've become keen to this. Hey, man, I, honestly, you know, you might get out of practice. You know, they might be ready to get out of practice because we might have a, a box of chip cookies right there, <laughs> a box of crumble cookies right there. You know, we've there's so many different things. Way to get, cover your bases right there, by the way. Yeah, there's so, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many different things that, you know, Provo and Utah provides for you. Sweets-wise, I've never seen it in my life. It's just so many different sweets and candies and cakes i'm like oh my god give me away i'll say this if you want to lose weight do not come to utah <laughs> that's hilarious Tishon lucas now gained 20 pounds by march uh not sure what happened here um mark pope mentioned that you he called you and said i'm not sure on this team with this group that the ball will be in your hand every time and it'll be the same kind of score or whatnot are you still interested and he said you kept talking and he was a little surprised by that. What was that conversation like? And why did you keep talking in spite of maybe it being who knows what role, like you said? Because um, at the end of the day, you know, I've been high major, mid major. You know, I've been able to have the ball in my hand 40 minutes, um, have the ball in my hand for 10 minutes. And it's all led to nothing. And so my biggest thing was coming and finding somewhere where I was going to be able to impact the game and impact winning. And, you know, he helped, you know, have a clear vision on how he can help me as a player and a person. And then uh, a clear vision on how we can do this thing and make something special out of it. So 
that was my biggest thing. You know, I wasn't worried about, you know, having the ball in my hand 40 minutes. I did that in my last spot. Um, didn't really get us anywhere, but, you know, just trying to do whatever I can to help win. And, you know, we've been winning here a lot, top 25 last couple of years. You know, yep. we're just trying to do something special this year. You've mentioned in previous conversations how much the NCAA tournament making that bracket means to you as well. No, for sure. Uh, my only tournament hopes was knocked out my freshman year when we lost the last game of the year to Rutgers, who was the worst team in the Big Ten. Mm. And so um, that's just something I want to be able to, you know, eventually tell my kids, my family, have that experience. You know, everybody wants to get to NCAA tournament. A lot of people don't get a chance to go. And so, you know, I just want to be one of those that's able to go and, you know, anything happens when you get there. Let's go. T. John, let's give you some tournament hype train karma. Let's go. Man. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's build the steam towards that. It's For great sure. to have you in Studio B, and uh, we hope that uh, the guy that we're talking to next Seneca Knight's still uh, catering meals for you and taking care of you that way, too. Man, I hope he still does that, too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask him about it. I was going in a sec. Thank okay. you, T. John.